Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for being here today for this particular episode. Um, we are talking about inclusivity in the pagan and witchcraft community. Now, I want to preface this for anyone watching on YouTube. Again, since I have this presentation up, I can't see the live chat right now. Um, I am going to pop over. I had to get a new microphone, so I'm going to pop over and make sure that you can hear me real quick. So if you can hear me, please let me know. Um, let me see. Hello, everyone. Please, again, let me know if you can hear me. I hope everyone's doing okay. I hope that if you are in the path of Hurricane Laura, that you have been safely evacuated or you have moved to um, a location that is safe. You have done what you can um, to be safe in this particular storm. Um, so I, I think you can hear me. Let me just check something real quick because I do want to make sure that you can hear me because I've been having nothing but issues. Okay, perfect. Sorry, my audio is definitely working. I am an anxious person, so yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to the presentation. You can see here, we can just go ahead and get started. So we're going to be talking about inclusivity in the pagan and witchcraft communities, but first I do have a few announcements. The first announcement is that the giveaway is still going on. The last day to enter the giveaway is August 31st. So for those watching on YouTube, that is Monday. Podcast listeners, that is going to be the day that this podcast goes live. Um, it will be closing at midnight on Monday or Tuesday morning, I guess. So if you haven't entered already, make sure you hit the link in the description below. Podcast listeners, check out the link in the description and go ahead and enter that way. Please keep it to one entry per person. I will be validating that. Um, and then when the giveaway closes, I will be announcing a winner live on YouTube probably next Friday, whatever next Friday is. Um, the 4th? I think Friday is September 4th. So I will announce the winner live on YouTube on September 4th. Probably same time I do my live streams, 2 p.m. Eastern time, so look forward to that as well. Um, the next announcement is that my shop is going to be updating September 1st at 12 p.m. Eastern time. I have a bunch of new products to add. I will have a new guided meditation. I've got some cute new little pouches and some altar cloths, so if you've been wanting to get your hands on something like that, uh, my shop will be updating 12 p.m. Eastern time on September 1st. And if you want to see some of the things that I'm going to be adding to my shop, make sure you're following me on Instagram at Round the Cauldron. All the links is always in the description and in the show notes. Um, the next little announcement is that this topic was voted on by my patrons over on Patreon, but it was recommended through my Discord community. So if you ever have a topic that you want me to cover or that you have questions about, feel free to suggest them. There are many ways you can do that. Any of my social media or Facebook group or Discord community works. If you'd like to have the chance to vote on what we talk about next, you got to join me over on Patreon. Anyone on Patreon gets the chance to vote for what we talk about next, no matter what your tier. All right, so um, we can go ahead and get started. I'm anticipating this is going to be kind of a long episode. I have several 
slides here for those watching on YouTube. And I also have some note cards because there were other things that I couldn't fit on the slides and I didn't want it to be a wall of text. So we can just continue on. Um, I do need to say thank you to my patrons. I have gotten several new patrons over the last two weeks. Thank you, Jess, Rose, Renee, Holly, Blue, Hillary, Lee, and Leli. Um, again, the link for my Patreon is there, patreon.com slash roundthecauldron. Um, also, the link to my shop is shop.roundthecauldron.com. So, jumping into the topic, the first thing that I want you to ask yourself is, is your practice and the way you interact with the community inclusive? So this matters when you speak to or interact with other people and not just on your own or the thoughts that you have just randomly throughout the day or anything like that. Um, inclusivity is a means to make sure that everyone, no matter who they are, no matter their age, sex, gender, race, etc., cetera, um, to make sure they're not excluded sim uh, simply for being who they are. Um, and I have a typo here on my screen that I forgot to include the word not. Um, so we're trying to make sure that no one is excluded. Everyone can participate uh, in the practices that they have access to and that they want to learn about. There are some caveats to this, obviously. The first one is going to be um, taking into consideration cultural appropriation. The second one is going to need to take into consideration different laws and regulations. For example, when it comes to age, I know minors, there are some things that you cannot do as a minor. Um, we do need to keep those in mind as well. So we also need to define some terms. And I have <laughs> many different terms that I'm gonna talk about here. We're gonna go through each of them um, on their own and define them. And then we're going to go through each of them and give some examples of how these happen in different pagan and witchcraft communities. And then towards the end, we're gonna talk about some things that we can do as individuals to make our community better, okay? Um, so the first thing that we need to define is racism. Now put simply, racism is a form of prejudice in which one person believes that the other is inferior based on the social construct of race. Um, it's often, way more complex than the definition that I just gave, and it covers a wide range of systemic and institutionalized issues. There is also the fact that when we speak about racism, we're not necessarily speaking about prejudice in itself. We are speaking about the system of oppression that uses race as um, a means to justify that oppression. So when we're speaking about racism in this way, I want you to keep in mind that since we are speaking of racism as a system of oppression, it is impossible for uh, someone to be racist in this sense against like a white person because white people are the majority and they are um, the ones that are in the positions of power, they hold the most power. We, I should say, hold the most power. Um, I am a white woman. Um, we hold the most power over those, the minorities, the, um, the black community, the Latino community. You know, the, it works as a system of oppression. We as white people are not oppressed. We as white people do not experience any sort of ill effects or violence or hatred based on the color of our skin to make our lives more difficult. So please keep that in mind um, going through this that racism in this respect is the system of oppression that uses race as a foundation for that hatred. Okay, now I cannot speak to any struggles, any hardships, or the experiences of the black, indigenous, and people of color communities. I am a white woman and I do not speak for them. Okay, so keep that in mind as well. Also, I need to mention here before we continue that all of the information I'm presenting here in this episode is done through my own research. 
Um, I don't have a degree in whatever this would be. I don't have a degree in like racial injustices or um, women's studies or anything like that. This is all based on my own research. And with that in mind, there is the possibility that I am forgetting something or that I don't have a complete understanding of a particular word or concept. So please keep that in mind too. I've got some links in the description and in the show notes for different articles and sources and stuff that you can read too if you're interested in where I got my information. Um, okay, so we defined racism. We can move on to the next term is ableism. This is one that I can resonate with because I am not a neurotypical person. I don't have any physical disabilities, but I do have some mental illnesses that affect the way that I live and the way that the way that I view the world. So ableism is the tendency to regard people with a disability as incomplete, diminished, or damaged. Again, it's also a complex issue that covers a wide range of systemic and institutionalized issues, and oftentimes people don't realize that they are perpetuating ableist stigmas. We'll talk more about how this plays in with the witchcraft and pagan communities, but this is why we have things like the ADA, the American Disabilities Act, and um, we have laws regarding accessibility for buildings and um, access to treatments and things like that. Um, so the next term is going to be sexism. Sexism is discrimination and devaluation based on a person's sex or gender as in restricted job opportunities, especially such discrimination directed against women. As with racism and ableism, sexism also tends to be complex and involve systemic and institutionalized issues. Um, oh, I forgot to mention for podcast listeners that all of these definitions are coming directly from dictionary.com. Um, sexism, we know what sexism is. This is why we have the feminist movement. And I also want to mention here, I don't have a slide for it, but if you're... We need to be intersectional when it comes to these things too. And I'll try to remember to talk about that too when we get to the things, um, when we start talking about the things that we can do. I'm gonna make a note of it really quick so that I don't forget. Um, but if you're like me, if you are female presenting, chances are you have experienced sexism at some point in your life. Um, it does play a role sometimes in the pagan community and the witchcraft communities that I have seen, but it's not as prevalent. Again, we'll talk about it. Um, okay, I made a note of that thing that I needed to make a note of. The next term that we need to define, need to define is ageism. And... Ageism, there, there's two parts to this, and I included both definitions here because I think they're both relevant. The first part is that ageism is a tendency to regard older persons as debilitated, unworthy of attention, or unsuitable for employment. The second part is just um, discrimination against persons of a certain age group. The next term that we need to define is xenophobia. Xenophobia is defined as an aversion or hostility to disdain for or fear of foreigners, people from different cultures, or strangers. Now, this one you might think is a little weird to add in here, but it's something, <clears throat> excuse me, it's something that is becoming more common that I'm finding in online pagan and witchcraft spheres of community. So we need to import, uh, we need to make sure that we understand this word too. Um, I mostly see xenophobia happen with white Americans, claiming that those who look foreign need to quote unquote, go back to their own country. Um, that has nothing to do really with witchcraft and paganism in this respect, but that is sort of my basic understanding of the term and the concept of xenophobia. We also need to look at classism. Now, classism is defined as a um, biased or discriminatory attitude based on distinctions made between social or economic classes. For example, middle class versus lower class, wealthy versus impoverished. Classism is when someone from a higher class, a wealthier person, 
looks down on someone who is not on their level, basically someone who doesn't have as much money as they do, someone who is living in poverty. Classism can also be a form of, um, not be a form of, but classism can come from privilege. Most of the time it does come from privilege. But what I mean is that sometimes it happens out of ignorance and some people just don't know any better. They don't know that someone living in poverty might have to choose between paying their rent or buying groceries for their family. There's also this term here, SOGI. Um, it's S-O-G-I for podcast listeners, and it actually stands for Sexual, sexual Orientation and Gender Identity. Um, this is actually an acronym that I learned from a training uh, when I worked for a hospital in Oregon a couple of years ago. Um, SOGI is included here in its own sort of category because I didn't feel like it fit quite in with sexism, but this would include discrimination and prejudice based on someone's sexual identity, orientation, or gender. This includes all manner, all manner of the LGBTQAI plus issues in community. Okay. So we have definitions out of the way. I hope you stuck with me through that. I didn't want this to really turn into like a, like a lecture, I guess, but it's important to understand these terms, what they mean and move forward from there. Because if you don't understand what the terms mean, it's going to be impossible for you to accurately see it in the community and then do something about it. Um, but I want you to be able to use your critical thinking skills to form opinions and question the things that you see. It's, it's an important thing for you to do. This is why I give you these definitions and why I tell you to do your own research. Because everything here is based on my research, so naturally I'm going to see it a little bit different than you will. But I'd like for you to be able to go forward from this and understand these terms while also questioning the things that you see around you. And, you know, maybe you will have different ideas than I will. Maybe you'll have different ideas than someone else. Um, but please use your critical thinking skills and go, go into the community with, with your thinking cap on <laughs> and go forward from there. So the first thing, I want to talk about what racism looks like in the pagan and witchcraft communities. I'm not going to talk about what it looks like outside of this because there's a lot of other sources for education out there right now, especially with everything that's going on in the world with Black Lives Matter and the, the movement for racial justice, okay? But within the witchcraft and pagan communities, we can see the most notable examples of racism in the um, some sects of Norse paganism. And this is a form of blatant racism, basically. Um, Odinism is a sect of Norse paganism uh, that worship Odin and claim that only white people can worship or honor the Norse gods. That is the furthest thing from the truth. However, we see these pagans perpetuating their white supremacist ideals and using their religion to do so. There's also the fact that White supremacists, even outside of the pagan community, have taken these Norse symbols and used them as symbols for their white supremacy. Okay, now a form of systemic racism and one that is not always so obvious is the fact that books on cultural and um, ethnic practices are oftentimes not written by people of those cultures or ethnicities. So books like um, books on hoodoo, voodoo, santeria, they're often written by white people who have no business teaching cultural and ethnic faiths. And when this happens, it essentially drowns out the, um, the voices of those cultures and the ethnicities that deserve to be writing about their own stories, about their own faiths. We don't want to drown out their voices. And this isn't something that happens uh, not necessarily on an individual level. I know Firelight actually wrote an amazing 
blog post that has so much information in it. That link is in the description and in the show notes um, that talks about how racism is perpetuated systemically within pagan publishers like Llewellyn and Weiser. Um, and that goes into the fact that a lot of the people that are writing these books or teaching about the cultures and the ethnicities and th those practices that they have no business doing, they are essentially profiting off of someone else's cultural practice. And there's a problem with that because for the longest time, let's let's take indigenous peoples, for example, they didn't get the freedom to practice their religion, to practice their belief system until recently, I think within like the last 50 years. And so it's really upsetting for them culturally um, for a white person to come along and be a shaman and practice indigenous practices and then make a profit off of it because then it perpetuates the idea that it's totally fine when a white person does it. But when an indigenous person that has every right to practice those practices from their culture does it, then, you know, it was illegal. So that is one of the bigger problems that I see within the pagan community. And I do want to mention here that closed cultures are different. Um, when we talk about inclusivity in paganism, I know there's going to be people out there who say, wait, but, but the closed cultures, the indigenous peoples, they need to be inclusive of everyone else. No, they don't. And we'll talk about that a little bit towards the end. But calling out cultural appropriation is not a denial of inclusivity. Okay, I want you to keep that, keep that in mind. Um, there is also racism perpetuated when people choose to ignore the words of Black, Indigenous, and people of color. When they say that what you're doing from their culture is disrespectful. This goes for smudging, practicing hoodoo voodoo, and any other cultural practice that you really have no business practicing. And... I want to mention too that if you were invited in, that's different. If you were invited into that cultural practice by someone from that culture and you're practicing it and you've been initiated or whatever that culture requires, then that's different. You're not taking part in cultural appropriation. You were invited in by that culture. Um, and this also goes along the lines of taking concepts, practices, and ideas from closed cultures and using them as your own with no cultural context or respect. That's a problem. Okay, next we're going to talk about ableism. Ableism is something that we've talked about before, but not so blatantly. Um, we had a conversation in the live stream of one of my previous episodes about, um, I think it was mental health and trusting your gut. Um, but someone had asked me if I had ever encountered gatekeeping in the witchcraft community when it comes to mental health because someone told them that because they had bipolar disorder, they could not practice witchcraft. That is a form of ableism that is perpetuating stereotypes and that's not okay. So obviously that does happen in the communities. Um, telling someone that because they have a mental illness like bipolar, uh, bipolar disorder, um, DID, dissociative identity disorder, schizophrenia, um, depression, anxiety, you name it. Telling someone that because they have this, they can't practice witchcraft or be a pagan, that is very ableist. Um, we also need to make sure in the community that we aren't seeing um, neurotypical and abled people as the default. Um, that that can lead to a lot of, I even talked about this too, where people always say, you know, oh, you have to trust your gut. Oh, you have to trust your intuition. It's like, mm, but I can't. <laughs> it's something I'm working on, but it's not my default. It's not something that I, ha I can do like your neurotypical people would just be able to do because they don't have the mental illnesses behind their intuition or behind their gut feelings like I do. 
We also need to realize that certain conditions make certain things difficult or impossible for people. Um, we, we, I don't, I keep saying we, I have seen this too, besides the mental health thing. There are so many resources out there for people learning paganism or learning witchcraft in general. And they always tell you that you have to visualize, you have to be able to visualize what you're doing, visualize your manifestations, visualize the energy, do this, do this, do this, all in terms of visualization. What they don't realize is there are people out there who literally cannot visualize. It's a medical condition called aphantasia. They do not have the ability to visualize. That is another way I think that we just need to be mindful of the way that we're speaking and the things that we're telling people to do. I also want to talk about accessibility here for a second because there are so, there there are like videos and websites and um, podcasts and different things like that that aren't accessible for everyone. So what I mean by accessibility is for like YouTube videos, are there subtitles? Do you have a transcript of a podcast? Do you use alt text when you post images on social media? Those are all things that your average person doesn't think about. So again, in the community, your average person isn't going to think about these things either. And my biggest issue with ableism in the community is when people tell you that you have to heal the mind to heal the body. That is the biggest load of crap I have ever heard in my life. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with my mind. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. Yes, I have some mental health issues, but they don't correlate with my body specifically. There are studies that show that different mental states and different emotions and things like that can have an effect on your body but just a general like heal your mind to heal your body or you have to heal your mind to be spiritual or you have to heal your body to be spiritual that's all ableist crap that needs to stop the next one that i want to talk about is sexism um sexism again i see it in people who perpetuate the idea that only women can be witches uh, I don't see that one very often anymore. I do see a call for people to recognize that men can be witches too, which, um, duh, of course they can. But there are people out there who say, no, they can't, they're, they're men, they can't be a witch, they have to pick a different word, which is stupid. Um, then there is also the idea of women-only spaces that exclude other sexes and genders for no other reason than because of their sex or gender. Um, raising the voices of male witches or pagans over the voices of females, and then mansplaining. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Hold on just one second. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, it's just me and my daughter home right now, and somebody was knocking on the door, and um, I guess I just got, like, ding-dong ditched because I opened the door and nobody was there. Um, okay, so where was I? sexism. <sighs> okay, I want to talk about this thing that I have up here really quick. Um, women only spaces that exclude other sexes and genders for no other reason than because of their sex or gender. This one can get complicated because I understand the need for women only spaces for safety issues during um, healing from trauma or some sort of issue like that. I understand that completely. That is a reason, though. For me, that's a valid reason to exclude people because of their sex or gender. Because the reason is not because of their sex or gender. It is because of a safety issue for healing and trauma, okay? But when someone just says, nope, no, we don't want any men here just because you're a man, we, we don't, we'd rather not. That's a problem. The same thing goes for women's spaces too, okay? Um, and then raising the voices of male witches or pagans over the voices of females. 
this happens sometimes. It's not something that I see a lot, but it does happen. And then mansplaining. I think in the pagan community or on Twitter, at least where I've seen it, we have coined it witch-splaining, um, but that's that doesn't apply here. When a man comes to you and explains what you're doing, like you don't know what you're doing. That's mansplaining and that's really annoying. Um, anyway, this, this can also become an issue for trans people though, and I'm going to talk about that when we get to the soji section. But the next one that I want to talk about is ageism. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you're not finding this episode too boring. This is a really heavy topic, really important to go through all of these completely and understand them completely. But ageism happens in the pagan and witchcraft communities when it comes to discounting the words and or advice of elder witches and pagans because they're quote unquote out of date. Um, placing elder witches and pagans on a pedestal like they can make no mistake, and also discounting the ideas, concepts, and practices of younger, page younger pagans and witches solely based on their age. Ageism in our community goes both ways. There are some people who completely disregard the, the elder pagans and witches in the community that have been practicing for decades simply because they've been practicing for decades and people think that they're out of date or they're out of touch or something like that. But it also goes to the opposite end of that spectrum. There are people who completely discount the beliefs and practices of um, younger pagans and witches. And neither one of those is the right thing to do, in my opinion. Um, just because someone is old or someone who has been practicing witchcraft or paganism for decades doesn't mean that you just get to write them off. They still have important things to say. Um, same thing, just because someone is young and maybe hasn't been practicing for as long doesn't mean you get to write them off. They have important things to say too. Also, we can't discount a person and their practices and faith just based on their age. You know, I've been practicing for 15-ish years, okay? There might be a 20-year-old out there who knows way more than I do because they grew up in it. So we can't, we can't discount and disregard the practices of someone and the opinions of someone solely based on their age, okay? And then the other part to this is it's a really dangerous thing to place anyone on a pedestal and to hold someone in such high regard that you believe that they can't make a mistake. And this is especially true in the pagan and witchcraft communities where most of us are learning every day. Most of us are unlearning things every day. And there are things that, you know, we're going to make mistakes. And if you have someone on a pedestal because they're an elder witch or because they are a, a younger witch, if you have them on a pedestal and you view them like that, that leaves no room for you to question things that maybe they say something that is problematic. You're not going to question it because you view them in such a high regard that they can make no mistake. I also want to talk quickly about xenophobia. But I need to mention here that I don't encounter xenophobia very often in the witchcraft and pagan communities. Um, I also have a very basic understanding of this concept, so it's possible that my examples here aren't entirely correct or don't make sense completely, so if so, please let me know. Um, but. The examples that I have for xenophobia are telling someone they can't be a pagan or a witch because of their culture or where they come from, um, telling a pagan or a witch that they can't do X, Y, or Z because it's against the Wiccan read, and keeping Wiccans out of pagan and witchcraft spaces because they are different. Um, this can also be applied for all other belief systems. I have here in my notes that the second one might be a stretch for xenophobia, but it makes sense to me because xenophobia is like the fear or disdain for people who are different than you or for strangers. And when we start telling people what to do based on their beliefs or because they are different, 
then I don't know, maybe it's like telling someone that they're not welcome because they are a Wiccan. I see that a lot. Um, people seem to really look down on Wiccans and I don't know why. Um, but that's, I have a very basic understanding of the concept of xenophobia. So that is something that I need to do way more research into to make sure that I have an accurate understanding so I can have better examples. So if you have examples of xenophobia or if you um, have a better understanding of it, I'd love to hear your side. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on that one too. I also want to discuss classism. Again, classism comes from privilege. This includes things like looking down on or excluding pagan um, or excluding a pagan witch or community because they don't have certain tools, um, not believing that some people don't have adequate access to certain plants and ingredients, and the belief that if everyone just tried hard enough, they could have the tools, herbs, or whatever it is that they need. Um, again, as I said, classism comes from privilege. Sometimes, you know, if they're not exposed to people who live in poverty or who don't have that adequate access, they're not going to know any better. They are going to be very naive and think that everybody has access to all of this, you know, all of the tools and the things that money buys, right? Um, but again, we'll talk about privilege in a minute. The last one, I think it's the last one here, is... SOGI, the sexual orientation and gender identity discrimination. This looks like excluding trans and non-binary people from participating in or joining a coven, excluding trans women from women-only spaces, and telling someone they can't worship or work with a specific deity solely due to their sexual orientation or gender identity. And immediately what pops into my head is Z Budapest and her, you know, very specific tradition of Dianic Wicca that looks to exclude anyone that does not have a um, vagina or who was not born a woman. Their, their traditions are very heavily based on the sexual identity of their members. And uh, now this isn't all Dianic traditions, I want to make that very clear. These are just the traditions that follow Z Budapest and her guidelines. So that is a form of Soji discrimination, telling someone that they can't join a women-only coven just because they are a trans woman and they weren't born a woman. Trans women are women, okay? The same thing goes for the other direction. I'm not familiar with any covens that are men-exclusive, but if a men-only coven were to exclude a trans man, it would be the same thing. And I have seen people tell other people that they can't work with or worship um, specific deities because of their sexual orientation or gender identity or um, any of that, their sex in general, which I think is just silly. There are some deities who work more with women than men, but I'm not too familiar with any of them, so I don't want to speak on that too much. Um, the next thing that we need to talk about is cultural cultural appropriation and inclusivity, okay? Being called out or educated on cultural appropriation is not a denial of inclusivity. Some gates are meant to be closed for a reason, and it's perfectly acceptable for one culture to tell another that they cannot take their practices. Okay, so practices of closed cultures are closed because of belief, context, cultural ties, and history. Okay, it's, when you think about it on the surface, it doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense that you can be inclusive and still uphold the idea of cultural appropriation. But you can, because there are certain things that you just don't have access to, period, okay? Like, <clears throat> excuse me, um, when a white person has no right to demand access to a cultural practice, you can be invited in, but you cannot demand to have access to those practices. You cannot demand for someone to teach you. And the biggest reason for this oftentimes is history. 
because these cultural practices were historically banned and the people from these cultures were not able to openly practice their belief systems, it's very disrespectful and offensive when a white person comes along and they can completely get away with doing whatever they want because they're white, right? And, you know, the when a white person does it, it's okay, but when an indigenous person or someone from another culture does it, then people look down on that and ban even those beliefs. So I want to make it very clear that cultural appropriation and inclusivity can happen together, or the idea of cultural appropriation is... There's a thing that I'm trying to say. <laughs> Um, I'll think of a better way to say that, but you can call out cultural appropriation and still also call for inclusivity because inclusivity does not cover closed practices, period. I will go back to using the doctor analogy that I used, um, in the article that I wrote about gatekeeping, okay? You can be invited in but you can't demand that they teach you. If you want to read about that analogy, I'll leave a link in the description and in the show notes, or you can just go to my website. Um, the article is called On the Topic of Gatekeeping, I think. But I will find a link and I will leave it in the description. Now we can move on to the, the fun stuff. What we can do to be better individuals and what we can do to be better as a community. Okay. Um, I'm sorry that this episode is really long. I'm sorry that this episode is really information intensive. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm, I take that back. I'm not sorry because it's important. Um, apologizing is something that I'm working on in my shadow work, by the way. <laughs> but this, there are so many things that you can do to help combat, um, the, the racism and the transphobia and all of these issues in the pagan and witchcraft communities. There are so many things that you can do to be inclusive in your own individual lives and in your practices and in the way that you interact with the community, okay? The first thing you can do is listen to marginalized communities when they are speaking out about something that is problematic. I just recently had this issue when I made a video talking about bullying and um, cancel culture and conversations. We were talking about the Faded Star tarot deck and how some of the images that they were using were very offensive and perpetuated a lot of negative stigmas for the mental health community. If you want to watch it, by all means go watch that video, but we need to listen to marginalized communities when we are trying to make our community better. If one community is standing up and saying, hey, this thing that you're doing is hurtful to us, or this thing that you're doing is offensive to us, then the rest of the community needs to listen. We need to stand up and listen. We also need to be aware of the content that we consume. Again, this goes back to, for me, books. Um, if, if I ever wanted to read something about Santeria or um, any of the African diasporic traditions, then I would do my best to go to the source and find someone within that culture who can write about it for me to learn because that is the purpose of them writing the book. I don't want cultural information from a white person and I will never teach cultural information because I'm a white person. I don't have the right to do that. So be mindful of the content that you consume. This goes for books, podcasts, YouTube videos, you know, basically everything. Um, we also need to think about if you create content, <clears throat> having a hard time talking today. We also need to discuss that if you create content, are you inclusive? Are you making your content accessible? This is why my podcast episodes have transcripts. If someone wants to, you know, take part in my podcast and they are hard of hearing or they are deaf, they have that option because it's transcribed. And the same thing goes for YouTube. 
Um, a lot of my, my older videos and my older podcasts aren't transcribed or have subtitles yet, but I'm working on it. Those are things that I do myself because I can't afford to pay anybody right now. Um, but it also goes for uh, if you have a website, is it accessible? Do you use alt text for your images for people that use screen readers So, because maybe they're blind and they can't actually see the image? Alt text is an alternative text that describes the image to people who can't see the image. Um, that's Those are all things that we need to take into account if we create content. Are we accessible to everyone that we can be accessible to? We should also, um, we also need to be able to understand our privilege. You should not rely on marginalized groups to educate you. Now, if someone like me who speaks about mental illness and how that plays a role in my faith and in my practice, that's, that's kind of, that's what I do, you know? So if someone has questions or topics or whatever, they can bring it to me and I can do my best to answer those questions. But also, we don't need to be treating content creators or authors or anyone else on the internet or outside of the internet, like Google. If you can Google the question and find an answer in the first page of Google search results, then you should probably do that first. <coughs> Now, if you have a question like personal experiences or advice or things like that, then yes, maybe go to someone, but only if they have said it's okay. It is not the responsibility of any marginalized group or community to educate you. That is that is on you. It doesn't matter if you say, but wait, how am I supposed to know? There are resources. There are people like me, for example, who talk about mental health and spirituality. I am a resource. There are people on YouTube and people that write books that talk about their faith and their cultural practices. There are able-bodied and disabled people who talk about their experiences. There are resources out there, but you just have to look for them. Don't leave it up to content creators and authors and stuff to teach you because it's not their responsibility. Um... Let's go back to this one really quick because I also, I want to discuss privilege for a second. Privilege changes how you view the world. And as a white person, I recognize that I have privilege because of the color of my skin. As a woman, I recognize that I do not have privileges that a man would have. As a neurodivergent person, I recognize that I do not have the privileges of a neurotypical person. As a person who is, I don't know, below the poverty line, I guess you would say, um, I recognize that I don't have certain privileges. But if you do, you know, you need to understand where that privilege comes from. And privilege doesn't mean that your life has been easy. Privilege doesn't mean that you haven't struggled. It doesn't mean that you're rich. It, it doesn't mean any of that. Privilege just means in the case of, um, you know, sex, for example, I'm a female, I'm not a man. Um, <clears throat> for, a, for a male, privilege for a male means that they have not been discriminated against based on their sex. They haven't been discriminated against because they're a woman. That is male privilege. The same thing applies for every other privilege out there. Okay. And we can also touch on the idea or the concept of intersectionality. If your inclusivity isn't intersectional, then it's not inclusive. Intersectionality means that it includes everyone. So, the easiest example to talk about is feminism, right? You have feminism and we want equality for all women. But if you don't include the fact that white women have a privilege even among other women of other ethnicities, then it's not intersectional. 
we need to understand that, yes, while women as a whole have struggles, um, like the wage gap and just how we're treated in the workplace, the different ethnicities of women have different struggles. Um, you know, black and Latina women are paid less than white women. White women are paid less than men. All women are paid less than men. But black and Latina women are paid less than white women. So making sure everything is intersectional means that everything comes together and we take into account everything. And that needs to happen within paganism and witchcraft too. So lastly, I want you to not be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes are part of the learning process. It's how we grow and it's how we learn as people and as spiritual beings. We also need to listen when people correct us, but we don't, you know, don't expect them to educate us. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Um, and back to learning from your mistakes. Making mistakes is part of our learning process. When we are afraid to make mistakes, we cannot grow and we cannot learn. I will be the first one to admit to you when I make a mistake or when a mistake has been pointed out to me. I will own up to that mistake, take responsibility for the mistake, but also for my own education so that I do not make that mistake again. That's part of this whole process and it's part of learning to be inclusive. I also want you to not get overwhelmed because if you've never thought of any of these things before, all of this information can be 100% overwhelming and you can feel like your brain is just going to explode. It's okay to take it one step at a time. Find something that is important and learn about it. Learn how you can be inclusive. Learn how you can shift your language to be more inclusive and continue. I don't expect people who have never encountered any of these things before to just take them all and run with it and do everything right. I don't even do everything right all the time, okay? Don't get overwhelmed and don't be afraid to make mistakes. And I included a quote here in the PowerPoint for those on YouTube um, podcast listeners. I will read it to you. It is a quote by Maya Angelou and it says, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. And we will leave it at that. That's basically everything that I have. I had all of those slides and um, all of my notes here. And we can move into the bonus section. So if you're not going to stick around for the bonus section here on YouTube, I will see you next time. Podcast listeners, you can turn it off here if you don't want to listen to the bonus section. And I will talk to you soon. Okay. I don't even know how many people are here, if anybody is even here right now. So I'm going to um, minimize this and go to the live chat and see what's going on. Hi. Okay, so there's a couple of you here. I know this is like a humongous topic. Um, hello, Cloud. Hello, Bex. Hello, Jezebel. Hello, Raven, Morning Glory. And hello, Curses and Prayers. Let's see. Uh, right. Okay. So Bex mentioned um, in talking about the Norse symbolism um, or the Norse symbols being used for Nazis. This is an important piece of history. Um, and she says that it all stems from. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Sorry, I lost my place. Um, it all stems from the Third Reich and the Nazis repurposing the old Germanic symbols for their patriotism and horrible doings. That is 100% correct. And it's actually not something that I know a lot about, but I did see that within my whole research. So thank you for bringing that up, Bex, because I forget or I forgot to mention it there. Um, Jezebel says that there's classism the other way around some pagans will dismiss someone for having too much and call it plastic witchcraft and consumer witchcraft that's true too that's very true i mean i'm not here to say like just because you have all this stuff you, you're you know you're not a witch or you're not a pagan or whatever and i don't look down on anybody that has all of those things 
do I think that maybe they could do something different? Maybe. I don't know, but it's not my place. You know, I'm not there to tell anybody what they can and can't do or what they should and shouldn't have. It's just, it's a, it's a whole topic, I guess. Um, Bex said that they might actually be guilty of that too sometimes. And you know, it's, we all are. We all, we don't live in a bubble. We don't live in a perfect world. We don't live in a perfect society or anything like that. So it's, you know, it's not uncommon for us to have done any of these things at any point in time. The difference between someone, you know, who still perpetuates this and who doesn't is the fact that we can recognize the things that we have done in the past or the things that we're currently doing and work towards being better. Curses and prayers says, I'm sad YouTube stops sending email notifications. I always seem to miss most of these as it is. They stopped sending email notifications. Well, what you can do, um, if you have the, the YouTube app on your phone or something, this will work. But if you're subscribed and then you hit the bell and um, go into it and hit like all notifications or all, all something, you'll get a notification on your app about 30 minutes before I go live because I have these scheduled so you should get a notification that way. I didn't know they quit sending emails like that's a bummer for us content creators because a lot of the time people you know I schedule these a week in advance and people will forget or they'll just miss out. That sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions or you know anything that they want to say about this particular topic. I I didn't want it to come off too lectury, but I feel like it did. I feel like it came off as like me teaching a class, which I'm okay with that. But, you know, with YouTube and how YouTube is, if it's not pretty and aesthetically pleasing, sometimes people just won't listen. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I hope anybody that watches it gets, you know, gets something out of it. I do want to apologize earlier for for those watching in the live stream when I had to stop my stream and go check the front door. Someone knocked. Um, and then and, and then I opened the door and nobody was there. So that was weird. Um, thank you, Bex. I really appreciate that. Well, if nobody has anything that they would like to ask, um, oh, hi, Dindrain. Very good and extremely important. Yes. I like to cover these these kinds of topics. Um, even if they're not aesthetically pleasing, I still like to cover them. They, they are important. And um, I'll have the transcript up too. And I'm going to leave a link to um, somewhere where you can download the PowerPoint presentation if you want to keep it. Um, I know some people like to do that, but I don't have a link up yet, but I will. Podcast listeners, that link will be in the description. The skeptical, hi, skeptical witch. Yeah, see, and that's, that's why I like to talk about these things because people don't talk about them. Uh, podcast listeners, the skeptical witch said that this was a really good video of things that aren't talked about enough in witchcraft and pagan communities. Sorry, I have to repeat myself so podcast listeners know what the heck I'm talking about. Um, but yes, things need to be talked about. And it's, I, I always want to stress that I don't want people to get overwhelmed because it's a lot. And even for me, you know, going back and learning these things and unlearning problematic behaviors that I didn't even know I had is a process. That's why I don't want people to be afraid to make mistakes. And I want people to be able to learn and go forward and do better for themselves and their communities. And I know some people are going to watch this or listen to this and say, oh, but that's just, you're just being politically correct and you're just being too nice and all of that other crap. But it's not politically correct to make sure that everyone is included. It's not. <laughs> So I hope it was informative. I hope it was helpful for you. 
and yeah I will I will catch you all later I hope that if you're watching the live stream you are safe if you are in the path of Hurricane Laura um, I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy if you had to evacuate you know I hope you were able to get to a safe place okay my thoughts are with all of you I'm doing what I can on my end to keep that whole area in my prayers and I am doing my prayers and giving offerings for all of you to be safe so I will catch you all next week um Oh, I totally forgot to do my, like, if you're watching now. Um, so if you're watching this, make sure this is your reminder to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. <laughs> if it was helpful to you. Or, you know, you can give it a thumbs down too if you didn't like it. Whatever. Everybody can have their own opinions. But I will, I will catch you all next week. Bye for now.